Hey, this is Lacey Sturm. I sing for the band Flyleaf, and this is my ransom note. Um, when I was uh, a little girl, I, I grew up, my mom always talked to us about God, and um, we kind of struggled financially. She was a single mom with six kids, and there's all kind of struggles that come along with that. Um, she's a young mom. Um, and when I was 10 years old, my cousin, who was three, was like a little brother to me. He was beaten to death by his stepfather. And I remember in that time just realizing to myself um, that how could I trust in a God that would allow something like that to happen? And there was so much hurt from that whole experience. And um, it just spiraled into depression. And, um, and I ended up hanging out with people who had issues like mine in their life and, and we and, and ended up getting involved in drugs and um, just continued to to uh, to fuel that depression that I, that I had. And um, when I was 16, um, very outspoken atheist and um, really searched a lot of different religions and really just felt so empty in everything, all the highs of life that I tried to experience, whether it was in drugs or sex or or even just deep thinking and philosophies, it was just seemed to all leave me really empty. And uh, and by the time I was 16, I remember I didn't want to wake up anymore and made a plan to commit suicide. And that day I had this miraculous experience where, you know, my grandma ended up um, getting in a fight with her and she realized something was wrong with me and she said, you have to go to church. And I was like, I hate Christians. I'm not going to church. And in the end, I ended up just getting to get her to shut up. I went to church and I sat in the back and, you know, was hating everybody there. And the preacher began to speak and everything he said was straight to my heart. Like I was the only person in the room and that was miraculous enough in itself. And finally he stops in the middle of what he's saying and he says, He's, he starts crying and he's a white headed old man and I had never seen an old man cry or a man cry. I don't even think I saw a man cry, not like that. And I was like, why is this guy crying? And he says, there's a suicidal spirit in the room and God wants you to know that he loves you. And I really, I just wanna encourage you to come up and let us pray for you because God has a plan for your life and he doesn't want you to die tomorrow. He doesn't want you to die tonight. Um, and okay, all the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I was like, this is just really freaking me out. I gotta get out of here. Um, so I didn't go up there and he continued to ask, please. And he had everybody be quiet. And he's like, please, if, if that's you, please come up and let us pray for you. And no one went up there. It was my pride that wouldn't let me go. I wouldn't, I was like, I knew some of the kids there that I had made fun of for being Christians and I was not gonna go up there in front of all these Christians as if I had something wrong with me and I didn't. Um, so I got up and went towards the door after he dismissed the church and a man grabbed me by the arm, which was a deacon in the church. And he was a white headed man, old man, and he, looked me in the eye as if I was his only daughter. It was, it was something I'd never seen in the eyes of, of any man. It was, it was something very much like exactly the way you think Jesus was, would have looked at me. Um, some kind of crazy, unconditional, just as you are, I know you deeper than you know yourself, kind of love in his eyes that I'd never seen in anyone. And it just made me stop, you know, and, and, and say, why are you looking at me like that? You know, um, it was shocking to see that. And so I, uh, I just was listening. I just had all my attention and he said, God wants me to speak to you and he wants you to know that even though you've never known an earthly father, that he will be a better father to you than any earthly father could ever be. And, you know, from then on, he started to say, you know, he's seen you when you cry yourself to sleep at night. And when he said that, it really 
shook my heart, shook me. It shook my heart because I cried myself to sleep every night since I was 10 years old. It was just a habit that I had from, and if I didn't cry, I couldn't sleep. Um, and he says, he sees you when you cry yourself to sleep at night. Um, I'm just so thankful that God sees us different than we are, you know? That he's not shocked by who we are. He doesn't turn away from us, but he sees us and he's not ashamed to look at us and to know us even when we're, even when we're so self-centered and we're so selfish and we're so ugly and hateful, particularly towards him, that he still looks at us with love. And now that I'm a mom, I watch my baby sleep and I know, I know that if I'm just me, I know how much God must love us. He watches us go through what we go through and just even watching us sleep. It's amazing to think that God is a father like that. But he said he sees you when you cry yourself to sleep at night and he loves you so much and he, and he sent his son Jesus to die and bleed on a cross to take all of the pain that you're experiencing on himself so you don't have to experience it. He died to take that pain out of your heart. And he said, do you want that? Do you want him to take that from you? Because he died to take it and he wants you to give it to him. And I, and I was like, well, you can try it. <laughs> you know, he was like, can I pray for you for that? And I was like, you can try it, you know? I was like, whatever you, I guess you could try. This is really weird. <laughs> I don't really believe in all this, but I know something crazy is happening right now. And so he laid his, he put his hand on my shoulder and began to pray. And he said something like, God, I pray that you would wrap your arms around your daughter and let her know how much you love her. And in that moment, it was the, I was so, something you just can't explain that you have to experience, um, where I literally felt like God, the God of the universe was, I was in front of the God of the universe. And he was, and the thing that I noticed, first of all, was that, I was completely selfish and I was completely not holy. Like it was this feeling of this God was so holy and awesome and I was so not that. And I ended up waking up the next day and looking at, you know, my ceiling, just praying and saying, okay, God, if you're real, you know, you're so real, obviously you saved my life last night. What do you want to do with it? So every day since then, I've kind of had the same conversation and been on a crazy adventure since. My name is Lacey and I have been ransomed.